that might be the only time I've asked the music to be shut off. <laughs> Our next speaker, Rob Christensen, has served in multiple clubs and district roles, including district director for District 22 in Kansas and Western Missouri. Rob has also served two terms as region advisor, including supporting 12 districts and training district leaders from all of Toastmasters International. Rob spent 22 years on active duty for the United States Air Force. Thank you for your service. And now in his brief non-Toastmasters time, He's an agile consultant helping government organizations with successfully implementing information technology projects. Rob is also an avid photographer and can be found at howdoiphoto.com. Please help me welcome Rob Christensen. Thank you. You can tell I'm not quite as mobile as normal, so I may look a little awkward standing up in front of the room trying to, to kind of hold myself up once in a while, but I hope you'll forgive me on that. People keep asking me, uh, why would you choose photography is to, to compare to speaking? What is the similarity there? And I don't know about you, but I, I tend to be a bit of a cross trainer, which kind of goes to the ankle injury as well. I was trying to run to get ready for my speech and it didn't quite go well. But cross-training is a really great way to improve your skills and to find similarities, not differences, in how you can improve as a speaker or in anything. And so as a photographer, one of the things I realized is there's this concept called the exposure triangle. Anybody in the room a photographer or want to be a photographer like me? So an exposure triangle, really quickly, is, oh, but I got to stay here because of the online. Yeah, I apologize. So the exposure triangle, yeah, I can, but I don't want to, right? Uh, <laughs> like, I can't do this and hold a mic. Let me try it. Oh, does the headset work? Let me turn off this one so we don't. Now it's green. That feels normal. Cool. Do I look normal? Does that look okay? Very normal. Thank you very much. Well, now I'll be able to slightly move around. So the exposure triangle in photography, and I have my prop just to show you I have a camera, is shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And I'm not going to give you a full training on photography. But the point is exposure has how much light gets into the camera. And if you've ever seen a picture that's too dark, that means it's underexposed. Or if it's too light or almost whited out, it's overexposed. So exposure is very important for success in photography. If you increase or decrease your shutter speed to get a different effect, you have to make another change on another side of the triangle to balance out the exposure. So I thought about in speaking, how can I make that apply to speaking? And I thought about what I want to call the speaking triangle, which is to know yourself, know your message, and know your audience. Those three sides of the triangle are all equally important. And I'm actually going to ask my lovely assistant to start distributing some handouts because I have information on there that we can kind of follow along here in just a minute. But the idea of knowing yourself, your skills, what focus, where you're coming from, knowing your message, what it is you're trying to deliver, and then who is your audience. Very critically important to have those three balance out. And I gave the example, I was practicing my intro in my club, and I gave the example of asking for a raise. And I don't know, has anybody ever tried to ask their boss for a raise? Did, did you ever practice on your spouse first? Like, hey, I'm going to ask my boss for a raise. You ever notice that those two different audiences probably would have a different approach, right? You may not exactly say everything to your boss that you told your spouse the night before about why you deserve a raise. So those three components work together to make a speech or any communication effective. And so I hope everybody got a pen as part of the welcome package, I think, in the book. So hopefully everybody has a pen. And I want to do this as kind of an interactive program where we can work together through this a little bit. And so I have these three components here, know yourself, know your message, know your audience on the front page. 
And I've given you a couple of examples off to the right, and I'm gonna go through the examples, and then I'm gonna ask you to write down a couple for yourselves. So as you see on the right side where it says role under know yourself, there's IT consultant, Toastmaster leader, and job hunter. When I first joined Toastmasters in 2005, I was active duty in the United States Air Force. I had heard that you civilian people do these things called job interviews, and I had no idea what that was like. And my chief told me, you should join Toastmasters. I went and found a local Toastmasters club off base and learned how to speak in regular clothes. The, the job hunting mentality there, though, is, is like the main reason that I initially joined. Now, as Jing mentioned in my introduction, I currently have a job, so I'm no longer using Toastmasters for that purpose, but it was really very important to why I joined. And so I, I wrote that down as one of the roles, and I italicized it because I'm going to use the job hunter in my examples as we go forward. But I also serve as an IT consultant, and I work with different organizations on software and hardware information technology projects. And I'm also a Toastmaster in different Toastmaster leadership roles and for two years served as a region advisor, standing in front of district audiences, teaching district leaders. All of those three roles are each distinct and different roles. And I would approach each one differently in my practice in my club. When I wanna practice for a Toastmasters event like this, I'm going to give a much different presentation than if I wanted to practice any of my job interview questions and answers in my club. Does that make sense? And I listed some skills off to the right, but this is hardly a complete list, but within the know yourself, knowing your ability to use vocal varieties, right, excuse me, vocal variety or body language, like I was trying to overemphasize there just now, storytelling, anecdotes or research. These are part of the skills that goes with knowing yourself. So the first piece of the exercise is I'd like each of you to think about between one and three roles that you play in your life what do you do in your life and what and or what brought you to toastmasters to improve your skills in and write write those down we'll take like about a minute to do that and i'm going to ask for a couple of people to give examples so go ahead and write down whether it's your professional life you could you can use toastmaster as one of your roles because a lot of us do just enjoy giving toastmaster speeches as well but anything you'd like to write down go ahead Okay, anyone want to share an example? How many of you put Toastmaster down as one of your three? And a few, usually get more than that, but okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, who has another example? I heard husband, but go ahead. Uh, uh, something mother? Wife and mother, okay, good. And you said husband, right? So, okay, so we got both sides of that. Daughter and assistant. Yes, my lovely assistant who did the handouts. And who also got them out of my car because I forgot and I didn't want to hobble all the way to my car and back. I was like, please go get my handouts. Any others? Family peacekeeper. Okay. That uh, that almost could fit into husband and wife and, and family member category a little bit. It might be different for each one of you. In fact, I would, I would bet most of us would agree that husband and wife are two different things. But... <laughs> But there might be some things that are different as we go down into the next section. I'm going to take my glasses back off. Sorry. I, uh, I recently competed in my home district and I watched my own. Have you ever watched your own speech after? I mean, you should be like duct taped to a chair to do this because you, you, it's really hard to get through seven minutes of yourself. But I literally adjusted my glasses 17 times in my contest speech. So I'm taking them off. So I'm not like just doing this the whole time. But in this, know yourself. The idea here is to consider when you're practicing, when you're working on your speeches, when you're considering your communications, what frame of reference am I starting from? Because that frame of reference is going to drive the message and the, the audience delivery, how it is received. 
And one thing that I've seen, the reason I bring this up is as a really important factor is I've watched people who take the Toastmasters assessment uh, to decide what path they're work, what they'd like to work on. Has anyone taken the assessment? I hope everyone's taken the assessment at least once. Okay. Notice that first question was really hard to decide, wasn't it? Like which three things do you want to work on? But if you focus on one point of view, like if I were to focus on job hunting, I would be very unlikely to pick project planning or coaching or change management as a job hunter. That would not be one of the three that I would pick, any of the three that I would pick. But I've noticed when talking to other members, they sometimes want to do the whole package. Like how can I fix all of me at once in that assessment? And by the way, I cheated and looked at the back. I actually put that, those 11 questions on the back because we're gonna get to that a little bit later. So if you saw me turn that over a minute ago. Uh, but it gets really difficult to figure out like which path do I wanna work on when you're trying to solve everything. And so my suggestion today is try to solve one thing at a time and one thing per path. And so we start with that first role. The next part is knowing your message. So in my job hunter example, I would like to, oh, she's already getting claps. What am I doing wrong? Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People online are like, what is going on? So when it comes to knowing, uh, now they're trying to compete. Okay, don't, don't, we, we, we do have a lot to get through. All right, so, <laughs> so on know your message, you see under topics, I use topics for my own job hunting in that case. Talk about yours. What's the most common question that comes up in a job interview? Tell me about yourself, right? So talk about yourself. What's your greatest strength? There was this one about why are manhole covers round? I don't know if you ever read any of those articles, but sometimes some companies will throw those weird curveball questions out. But one thing that I did with my first, back then it was the company communicator manual, my first path in Toastmasters. I worked on different answers to questions. I wrote speeches about talking about myself, why I wanted to work somewhere. Like I did research on Boeing and Spirit Aero Systems and companies that were in Wichita, Kansas, where I lived at the time, and be able to answer the question of why I want to work here. And I answered the question of what my greatest strength was, what my greatest weakness was, which is a really fun thing to do in front of an audience, by the way, of Toastmasters. But that was how I used my original CC to help prepare myself for job interviews. And in this case, what I'll let you think about, like if you think about the, the role of a husband, wife, family peacekeeper, what topics might you talk about in those roles? What might you discuss, communicate? You would very rarely get in front of your family like this and give a presentation. But remember in Toastmasters, we use public speaking as a training vehicle. This isn't the only thing we teach, teach ourselves to do. It's not just about public speaking, it's about communication. So using the front of the room to practice those skills in the job interview practice, you could very easily put two chairs in the front of the room, bring somebody else up to come sit down and then do your job interview speech in front of your Toastmaster club, sitting across from another person and just give that presentation. You don't have to stand and give that speech. And so if you'd like to practice communication, like on the birds and the bees as a dad, how would I give that presentation to my son? you could ask somebody to come up to the front of the room and you could give them birds and, birds and the bees speech. I'm not sure I should be recommending that, but that was like the only thing I could think. That's the only thing I did right as a father, I think. So that, that example though, is one of the types of messages you might have. So what I would like all of you to do for the next step, I want you to pick one of the three things. And again, feel free to default to the Toastmaster one. That might be an easier one to do when you're under pressure in a room, but pick one of the three and then come up with three messages that you would deliver in your role. Does that make sense? Okay.
Anyone have one they want to share? Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> exactly. Carly, did you raise your hand too? Sorry. Nope. Okay. Thought I saw another hand back there. Oh, Angel? I don't know if I want to admit this. Um, about a year ago, I decided to take up yoga a little bit to try to improve my my fitness a bit. I've had nagging injuries with my ankle and, and Achilles, and I ended up injuring my wrist actually in yoga. But one of the things that I really enjoyed about it was a, a really strong yoga teacher does those exact three things like the whole time, just every now and then reminding you to breathe or reminding you to smile or relax your shoulders or something, some sort of prompt that throughout the pre throughout the workout or the session, however you want to call it, really can make a difference because you could be like, and you hear smile, you're like, oh. And, and you just sort of soften up and relax a bit because you can get yourself all kind of worked up. So I, I appreciate that. And I know that may not feel like something that you would stand in front of the room and do as a speech, but you may very well be able to practice the, the message of, I, I've seen yoga teachers that will do kind of an opening to start the, the yoga session. And it'll talk about the mindfulness and things that you want to get into. A, and it may not be five to seven minutes, it may only take you two minutes, but that's okay. You could practice that and your closing, you know, as you wrap up. And a lot of the yoga teachers that I've uh, been in a room with that like to do like a quote or something at the end of the session after the, um, sorry, what's it called again? Shavasana, I think. Right? Yeah, after. So yeah, I, I listened. Um, so that that could be an opportunity where, it may not seem natural to give a five to seven minute speech that patterns what you would say, but you can find ways to practice those ideas in your club. Any other examples? Your colleague? I, thank you. I decided uh, to choose the uh, IT consultant role, which is an example role, but it's something that I have a bit of experience dealing with mm -hmm. and uh, is a pretty thorny topic. So the message for that is that I would be trying to get across is the need to more effectively tie your business side of your company and your IT technical support side together and try to convey the value of that. That would be my message and then the audience for that would be potentially company shareholders, mm -hmm. or I even really like this example of the CEO in the elevator mm -hmm. and thinking about what would I say to the CEO of, you know, a company like Apple, if I only had two minutes to convince him of, uh, you know, the validity of my idea. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Excellent. I'll tell you my, a big part of my job tends to wrap around the one word you said, value. It's, it's really like a very important part of, of IT consulting from my point of view, getting people to understand that when you design software, the value has to be there for the user, otherwise they won't use it. Anybody have an app on their phone? That was the are you listening question, okay? You all have phones, right? Anyone have an app they never use that you've downloaded? But yeah, exactly. That app has essentially no value to you, right? You, you thought it did, you downloaded it, but now you never use it, it really has no value. And that's where that value proposition comes in. And so what I would suggest when, if you were going to do messages around value or around, in this case, value specifically of IT to the business is try to frame it as you suggested, like when you said shareholders, do try to frame it from a customer point of view. It's very easy for, from an IT guy, I can look at software and go, oh, it's software, therefore it has value. But I needed to have value from the customer's perspective. How do I solve the customer's problem? So in my messaging, I definitely want to consider my audience there because I may have the audience of a customer and I may also have the audience of my IT team. And my messaging around the value of the software is going to be different to those two audiences. I would take that if you were going to use an example like that one for your job, I would even come up with four or five more subcategories of value as far as messaging goes. And what I found is that 
when I've worked with different individuals in different organizations, value is very misunderstood. In fact, I like to say kind of value drives earth, right? It drives like everything. I mean, I breathe because I value living. I just don't think of it that way. But if you frame, you can almost frame anything you do from a, point, uh, from a point of view of value. And so that one becomes a really tough one sometimes to get people on board with. In fact, I've even practiced value-based speeches in my Toastmaster Club when I did the visionary communication path, because that was the path I picked in my IT project leader uh, when I used that mindset to do the assessment. And it was really, like I said, it was really challenging to go through those. And I found that it didn't exactly solve all my problems, but it, it did help me be better prepared for some of the kickback that I would get at work and made me better at being able to speak on that topic. Anybody else want to give one on the messages? Okay. So for the final part, knowing your audience, what I want you to do is again, choose one of those topics that, that you had on the message and, and frame it from that point of view. I'm going to go along with the, I think, I think I did, yeah, either it could be to talk about yourself or the greatest strength in this case. But you see, I wrote down like your human resource screening interview is one audience. And anybody ever been through a human resource interview and then later uh, an actual technical interview? Then both, they're very different, right? Like an HR person wants to hear, and this is not offensive to our HR people, by the way. I mean, this is their job, right? An HR person wants to hear that you meet the requirements listed in the job description, right? They're not looking for deep technical. Some of them definitely know technical things, but that's not what they're looking for. They're looking to make sure that you have the five years of experience, that you can give some examples that prove that you've really done the job or whatever those things are. But they are a lot different than the hiring manager who wants to know that you no kidding know what you're supposed to know at a level that they would want to work with you. And then the CEO in the elevator idea was, well, what if I'm in my, in my company? Let's say I'm not looking externally for work, but I would like the opportunity, a new opportunity at work. I happen to be in the elevator with a senior leader and I have 30 seconds, 90 seconds maybe to pitch my idea on how I could run this new department or how I could create this new pro process. How would you create that message, right? So for you, pick one of those three and then pick three audiences that you might speak to. And if you wanna use a Toastmaster example again, you could use the example of my Toastmaster club, a contest audience and a conference audience. For instance, would be three distinctly different Toastmaster audiences. So go ahead and take a minute and, and come up with three for yourself. Anyone would like to shout out an example of an audience? Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Uh, the The role that I have is I'm a speaker trainer and a coach, okay. and I focus mostly on leadership development. So the the three different types of audiences that I have are first level leadership, mid level leadership, and executive leadership. And when I'm speaking about leadership skills themselves, it's very different for all three of those levels. Very good. Definitely, definitely different. Any other examples? Uh, Jing? Up, up front. Thank you. Hello. I am a QA team leader at work. And the message I was talking about is our products and services and possible troubleshooting. And my audience are 
suppliers, our operators, and our customers. So very different set of topics for each one. Definitely. And that's the thing, <clears throat> when you say very different set of topics for each one, there can be very similar messages, but you would definitely modify the message for the audience, right? Go ahead. Did you have a couple or are you just holding the mic? Please. My role is daughter. Mm -hmm. My message is how old is my mom, really? <laughs> my audience is stranger in the elevator, neighbor's kid, and her Toastmasters club. Thank you. <laughs> right. For those of you who don't know, sometimes uh, Jing is, uh, God, how do I say that? I, I think I'm not going to say it. All right, let's move on. <laughs> People confuse them for sisters. I'll put it that way. That I've actually heard. So, so she might, sometimes has to explain, this is my mom, not my sister. So let me, let me go back to one of them. Oh, from the trainer point of view, I heard like first level leaders, mid-level leaders, and executives, right? And, and so, okay, there, there we go, sorry. And so, yes, you can still have a, a training topic around, for instance, you know, like how to deal with conflict resolution. And it could be the same topic for all three, but your delivery, you're probably gonna use different examples in those different scenarios. And you're probably gonna take a different point of view on, on those topics, right? And so it could very easily be three completely different speeches on the exact same topic that to a complete outsider might sound very similar to them, but to the people in those different roles are going to definitely feel like, oh, this is targeted towards me. And that's really what you're trying to go for when you understand your audience is you hope that everybody walks out of room not thinking, wow, I was part of a group in a room today, but instead thinking, oh, Rob really talked to me about how I can improve my speaking. Although, insert your own name for, for Rob in that case. At the bottom, I wrote a little paragraph there on what I distilled out from my job hunter example. Where as a job hunter, I want to improve my answers to some of the common interview questions, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to read that to you. But I'd like for you, after this exercise, after we're done today, think about how you might write out a statement like that for yourself. Like, as a, as a QA team leader, I want to understand our products so that I can communicate more effectively with my customers. It doesn't have to be a whole paragraph. It can just be a single line. And at the next step that I wrote at the bottom, I want you to challenge yourself to use level one of your Toastmasters path. And by the way, there are speeches in level three and four that you can also use for these types of things to create five to seven minute presentations for the messages you defined above and practice those in your club meetings. Now, what I'd like to do next, turn over the page and look on the back. And I, I kind of alluded to this earlier. This is the very first question that comes up in the Toastmasters assessment. If you have never started a Toastmasters path, or if you've recently got past level three and you're getting into level four and five and you thought, hey, I'd like to start a second path, this is where you would start. And what I wanted to mention here, and I gave three examples down below, I use myself again. Uh, the job interviews, the TI leadership, and the project manager. Those three things, like as a job interviewer, I chose speech writing. And you may think you're not writing speeches, but I am writing answers to common questions. So they're not so much stand in front of a room, deliver speeches, but speech writing in my mind was making a really well-prepared answer to tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here? Why are you leaving your current job? What are your greatest strengths? Tell me about an example project where you save the company money. Those type of things that I get asked in my field, right? So speech writing, negotiation, just because I really am not good at asking for salary. I, I got to tell you the truth. And then interpersonal communication, because it felt like the closest thing on these 11 items to something that you're going to do in a job interview situation. Because interpersonal communications can definitely be, how do you talk to the hiring manager? How do you interact with an HR department? How do you interact with someone at a job fair? How do you network with others to find jobs? I don't know about you, but a number of my jobs have come from referrals or people knowing me. And I found, I didn't know that when I first left the Air Force because I didn't know anybody who wasn't in the Air Force. So I had to find a job the old fashioned way. But then later on, I started finding people in places that, thought, that said, you should work here, check out this job description. 
the next thing you know, I'm interviewing at that company. So that's where interpersonal communi communication came to mind for me. Your three might be different if you were going to do a job hunter, for instance. For TI leadership, coaching, leadership, motivating others. As a project manager, project planning, change management, and time management. Now, again, those aren't the only three answers that fit in those three categories. Those are the three that I chose. You may very well pick another one. But I think the most important thing that you can do, not only for yourself, but for members of your club, is help new members get past this screen. This slows people down a lot. And when you don't pick correctly, I don't know if you remember when Pathways, any of you that were members when Pathways first rolled out, there were a lot of people that were complaining that they were answering these questions and they weren't getting presentation mastery, which is what they wanted to do. They just wanted a pure speaking path. Well, I found out why that happened. You want to know why that happens? Good. One person wants to know. Okay, cool. So recently I decided to start a new path to practice contest speaking. So what do you think that's going to lead me to if I do this correctly? Presentation mastery. Okay, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm not a bad speaker. So as I answered the questions, there are a series of questions in the assessment where they ask you about your leadership abilities and about your communication abilities. I kind of answered like I'm a decent communicator. Like, are you comfortable in front of the room? Are you comfortable with your gestures? Are you comfortable making eye contact? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on the other ones, I was kind of like, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I basically told the computer I'm already a good speaker, right? So guess what it did not recommend as a path? Presentation mastery. It recommended motivational strategies as the number one path. And then two others, again, not presentation mastery. And I thought, well, why did that happen? So because I'm an IT guy and I like to do software testing sometimes just because I want to know these things, I went back and redid the assessment and pretended I was an average speaker. Presentation mastery came up. <laughs> but if you don't get the one you're looking for, it may be because you told the computer you're already good at something. <laughs> So keep that in mind as you work through it. But that's supposed to be the point. I should be wanting to work on things besides just platform speaking if I want to become a more effective communicator. Helping your new members especially, but learning this for yourself, how do I choose the right three things for the one thing I'm going to work on in this path? And then as you progress and you get more comfortable, like I think there's probably many of us in this room who Who's in more than one path right now? Yeah, quite a few people, right? So newer members, don't try to push them that direction quickly. Have them focus on one path first, obviously. But as a person gets more, how do I want to say this? More, uh, well, more advanced is a, is a good word. I was thinking of trying to be a bit more, uh, not, not trying to call people not advanced. Uh, confident, thank you. <laughs> a bit more confident in their abilities. I'm blaming that on the ankle. I just couldn't think of a word a bit more confident in their abilities, they may want to try new things and start a second path, right? When I've taken the assessment every time, I've taken it from one point of view. I started, when I started Pathways, I did the project manager version. Then later I did the TI leader version for another path and it went to team collaboration, I think. Then I, then I worked on, then I chose effective humor just because it was new. By the way, I don't think there's any assessment answer that comes out to effective humor. Just FYI, because it was built before that. And effective humor is not technically a first path. Um, that's not a rule. I just mean it was more designed as a second path for experienced members. So if you don't get that, you just have to go pick it yourself. But every time I've done the assessment, I've tried to take one role. So that's the last set of blanks. I'd like each of you to think about one of the roles that you chose today. And I want you to pick three things from the list on here. Which three things would you answer on the assessment today for your role? And you can choose one of the roles we talked about, husband, wife, mother, yoga teacher, speaker, trainer, QA team leader, or whatever you have down. And choose three and do that right now. self-conscious at all.
Hey, I was reminded that my ankle made me forget that it's engaging humor, not effective humor. I apologize for that. Did I see a hand? Oh, no problem. Yep. One's coming your way. All right. Who has examples they want to share? On the right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little late. No, the uh, no, okay. Online. So the role that I chose was IT consulting. Okay. Which was my profession for 25 years. Oh, okay. And the three skills or three topics I was interested in were coaching, project planning, and time management. Which comes out to be effective humor, right? Okay. Engaging humor. We've been okay. corrected. We've been corrected. Um, did I see another hand? Business owner? Okay. Business owner. Mm -hmm. And the three that I have on here is networking, negotiation, and project planning. Okay. Now, one thing to think about. When I think about business owner, is motivating others important to that? Is change management important to that? Is leadership important to that? Sure. What are you going to focus on? And you pick the three you picked. I think those are three great ones. Different people might have different answers. To, so don't think that, hey, because I just heard that's the answer for business owner. That may not be your answer as business owner. Or with a new member. And the reason I want to get to this is if you're helping a new member with this and they're doing what you do for a living, they may very well pick three different things and, and don't think that, oh, no, I need to guide them to the three things that I think, because it may be different for what's important to them. As a project manager and now a consultant, I could have very easily skipped project planning because I think I'm already good at it and just not use that and pick three others. But I think I did actually pick project planning because I wanted to see the Toastmaster Pathways version of it to kind of just get some different ideas. But keep that in mind that you will probably see a fourth or fifth good answer. The idea here is about focusing in on what you can work on in a single path. Carly, did you? Or are you just holding up? Oh, you're doing the mic thing? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Then at the bottom, I put, I did an excerpt from one of the paths. So my very first path in, in Pathways was visionary communication. And that came from my IT project manager answers, uh, project planning, change manager, time management as well as all those other answers later where I was a good speaker and not a good at other things. So visionary communication, I bolded the second line because this is something that I think you should look at when you look at the descriptions of these. These descriptions are really well written, but if you notice the line I bolded, you will work through projects that focusing on developing your skills for sharing information with a group, planning communication and creative innovating, innovative solutions. Somehow that second bullet in every single description in Pathways is the one that keys in my mind what I'm going to do in that path. I mean, the rest of the description is also quite good, but I'll, I will tell you this from my experience as a region advisor, one of the things that region advisors do, we work with companies, we kind of help your club growth director talk to companies about starting a Toastmasters program. And my first year's RA was at the end of the traditional program and like the months leading into the rollout. What we used to do is we will usually take a CC manual and a couple manuals on those trips to talk to the HR lead or the training lead or whoever it is we were meeting with in the company. But I had to come up with another way because we were going to be starting this new club. If they, if they decide to start a club, we were going to have to start a new club in Pathways, even though none of us had done Pathways yet. So I'm thinking, how do I sell this new program to uh, an HR leader? And what I ended up doing was I picked four of the of the 10 paths at the time, four of the 10 paths at the time. And I found that second line was all I needed to show. So I gave the name of the path, like leader, leadership development, motivational strategies, whatever the four were. I took that second line about what they would work on. And I just put that together at the top of a page. And then I told the person, like, here are some examples of what our program can do for your employees. And I'm not kidding you, I was at Whole Foods in, is it Austin, I think, Texas? Their headquarters, back before Amazon bought them. I was at their headquarters speaking with their head of training. And when I read those words off of those four paths, he was instantly sold. He said, that fits exactly 
with what we're trying to do for our employees. I thought, okay, I lucked into that one. And ever since then, I have used that second line to help like formulate my thoughts about what you will get out of a path. Again, the whole description is good, but when you're trying to tighten up your message, that's the best line. So when you are looking at the past, that might be a good trigger for you to say, are those the things that I want to do before you pick that path? Because if you look at those things right now and say, ah, I, I don't want to share information with a group or play in community, you know, then that's not the path for you, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? Cool. We are down to the last couple of minutes, so I've managed to time this right somehow, which is good. Anyone have any final thoughts or questions on what we talked about? No? That was easy. I definitely want to say, number one, thank you for clapping louder than the other room earlier when that came up. That was, that really felt good. You, you know, sometimes you stand in front of the room and you're like, oh, do they like me? So thank you very much for doing that. I really enjoyed this opportunity. I hope that this handout gives you some good ideas. I hope that you're able to take these ideas back to your club. I think this is a good way for you to help newer members frame their growth. Keeping in mind not to try to work on all three things at once. If you think about level one, level one tends to be the know yourself level, right? You're, you're working on your skill sets. You can work on your message and you can tie it to an audience, but when you got new members, don't try to overwhelm them with those things. And as you progress through, level two is also very much a know yourself level. And then beyond that, you start to work on the additional skills, continue to work at your own pace, continue to support one another. And if you have any follow-up questions, I put my email down at the bottom. Let's go take a break. Oh, I have to hand it over to somebody. My bad. Ding. Thanks. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. Let's give our presenter another rousing round of applause, please. Rob, thank you for coming and driving all the way from Kansas. And wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I have a certificate of appreciation for you and a little token of our appreciation from the district. Thank you so much again. Uh, Rob will be here the rest of the conference. And so if you have any questions for him, he will be available. At this time, I'd like to let you know also that the evaluation survey will be sent to all the attendees after the conference. And for those of you who are contestants in the room, if there is anybody, your griefing will be in gallery CD happening after that session is over. And if you are a judge or official for the contest, we will be meeting you in the hallway and Kathy Wolf over here will be finding you. <laughs> so find her. Thank you so much, Rob. Oh, we're taking a picture. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your break.